is an eight iron and it's a dead shank. Wow. Way right. Oh, it takes a hop shank. off the path. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. Very tough pitch shot right here. You gotta hit it into the hill. One hop up and bite and it's in. Kind of like that. Well, I would like to welcome to the Sub-70 Podcast, uh, the one and only, the legend, the uh, West, West West Texas Driving Range Pro, J.J. Colleen. Uh Pro, thanks for coming on tonight. I uh, figure we need to do an emergency podcast. Uh, lots of shit to talk about, so, you know, who better for opinions than you? So, appreciate you doing this. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a genius and expert. Is it really hard to say the word West? Like, did you stumble a little? Uh, yeah. Did you like, struggle well, bust a little yeah, bit on that? Well, yeah, and I don't, you know... Uh, read well anyway so i had to kind of like <laughs> contemplate this from my notes and it kind of went bad i'm better off if i just like free wheel it a little bit so oh god if we were, if we if we have notes we're in trouble here man well that's it highlights i wouldn't say detailed but i have to have like my where are we going with this then i'm writing you know like the whole time if you go to this then i'm connecting this to try to like you know keep some semblance of this i could reintroduce you if you want me to and i won't stumble over hell myself. no okay. let's go we're already we're already coming in warm let's uh, go like uh, the fajita here we go. All right. Uh, first, uh, first question: What beers do we have going tonight uh, down in Texas for the podcast? I think people are going to want to know that of uh, what's on the menu per se. Uh, well, I stopped drinking. Just kidding. I didn't. Um, Pale ale. I'm drinking Sierra Nevada right now, man. I'm just chilling here, hanging out. I have a little beer house. I call it. So it's this little. It's a little beer house around the corner, and I think it was an office or a mother-in-law suite or something. But it's just it's just a storage of beer. And I went to this one point where it was almost an episode of Hoarders where, like, every time I had a new beer, I was just going to, like, the whole walls, I was going to, I don't know if you super glue them, I don't know what you do, but, like, put them together. And then I came in here one day, and, like, if I had a couple, like, amazing ones, I'd still save the can. There'd be multiples. And I came in here, and I was like, this is a tough scene, man. Like, I, I, I don't, I, this is, this is, I wanted it to look museum-y and cool, and I was like, this is like a total frat house That's what situation. I saw, yes, and I, and I can appreciate the frat house. That's what I, to me, it looked like someplace I might pass out at, at two in the morning and wake up, and it feels uh, like it's 1995 all over again. That's it, dude. So more than, basically, now, and I, it should have been, I mean, life should be like this. Like, you have to be, it's MVP scenario to get up on, like, the little beer wall I don't even know what it's called, but it's basically on top of a cupboard. But yeah, you you got to be a goat beer to get up there. I can't be just firing every single beer. And we brew beer in here too, and we still haven't made a good one. We're like over twenty five, so um, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of good vibes in here. Well, I dig that. Um, let's get into the the big tournament from last week, the U.S. Open. Um, overall thoughts: uh, Matt Fitzpatrick getting his first major. It it seems to me the USGA didn't actually screw this thing up, which is nice. They let him, you know, shoot six or seven under par, didn't kill him over the weekend. So from your perspective, uh, you know, what was your view of what we saw last week? Yeah, I, dude, it was, I mean, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun tournament. I mean, I don't know Fitzpatrick very well. Um, I, uh, he's, I mean, when I was on the PGA tour is 2012, I should say very well, I don't, I don't know him. So he was probably, I don't know when he was in eighth grader then I have no idea. So he was probably pretty young looking at the pictures of him when he, when he won the USAM there, God dang, he looked like he was, Nine. I mean, I guess he he was a teenager. Yeah. I was like, geez. And then I saw a picture of him winning the US open. I was like, which one was the USAM? He still looks, now he looks 10. So, so I mean, I guess he wears the Skechers to throw him off. Just that adds an, an immediate forty years to whatever whatever uh, your your age is. Correct. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's why he did it. But I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, you know, I was I was pulling for Zalatoris. Not like I had anything against Fitzpatrick, but I was. You know, he got stung a little bit in the in the PGA, and, and you know, Justin Thomas kind of outplayed him down the stretch there, and Zalatoris. I don't know. I just felt as if it was his time to win one. I was kind of pulling for him, and tell you what, dude, he putted great. I mean, he, he did. He, he did that last putt. Was I mean, so it good. was hit. Oh God, it, it, it was hit right where he was looking. It was hit with the speed that he wanted. I mean, he was confident. He got up there. He went, hit it pretty relatively fast, and then it just it didn't quite break. But God, it looked like it was good with like a foot foot to go. I mean, Fitzpatrick whatever you're going to have some breaks in a golf tournament 72 hole major but you know he hit a little a little bit of a quacker off that tee 
and he was back far enough in that bunker where he could kind of fade it around that lip, that fesky lip, which guys were bitching about all week. And then, he, I mean, because he hit that big cut, the thing hit the green, and he was, I mean, he was barely outside Zalatoris, really. So, I mean, credit to him for a pretty good shot right there. But um, And then some clutch, clutch putts on the back nine. But it was really smelling like a Scotty Scheffler thing for a while. And, and, and you had Rom and Rory, you know, lurking, but... But Zalatoris and uh, and Fitz hung in there, and I thought it was fun. Did you like Did you like watching it? Well, the the commercials were brutal. It just sort of lost oh, it's its, it, it from that standpoint. But um, I liked the golf course presented great. I liked that the USGA didn't yeah. freak out when people got to four or five under, then started you know making greens unplayable, which is kind of nice to see. Like let them you know, you guys are going to go shoot some scores and that's okay. I don't think it needs to be even par or plus one or tricking up greens to throw somebody's round off. So I was glad they kind of let him play. Right. It seems like since Mike Davis has been gone, it's been a little bit more, you know, we're fine with a few under par here and not embarrassing the best players in the world, which is I think nice to see. Yeah. And then they got, I mean, it was like chilly new England weather or whatever, but they really got the easiest conditions they can get with, with the turf. I mean, where it rained and the greens were, hold i mean it's not like you could hit one from the fairway and you had to plan on 30 feet a roll like it was one stop check so i think they had it set up where if it did get kind of like a crispy situation we probably would have seen an even but we ended up seeing a six under and it was it was fine like i think that was great and if it would have been an even and a little crispier i think people would have been cool with it um but yeah it doesn't have to be set up like you have to get totally lucky on every single shot that's the deal man it's like when you're watching a major, especially especially the U.S. Open, it's really the uh, really the only one. The British Open, you get a couple funky bad breaks every now and again. But when you hit quality shots, and not only are you not rewarded, but it's in like a shitty spot, that's when it sucks. Like it sucks for the viewer, it sucks for the player. It just turns into a total carny show where it's where there's skill component, but it just there's a there's a there's so much luck. But I mean, I think that Fitzpatrick played the best, and he won. So that is set up correctly. And he seems like he has one of those games that would be great for a U.S. Open. The fact that, like, I don't think he has any weakness. It's just he does everything really well. He, right? Yeah, he, except he, he puts with the puts with the pin in from like five feet, so that drive gives me anxiety. But other than that, other than that, it's fine. pretty damn solid, right? Like he's just good. Yeah. Everything is good. Yeah. Like you can't, you know, I'm not surprised he won one. And that he kind of seems like a U.S. Open player where he's. You yeah, know. well, he was a dinker off the tee too, and he like he's he worked hard. I mean, his ball speed was over 180 on yeah. a few drives. Like he was like a 163 ball speed guy, like maybe even last year or the year before. And he could always play, but he was a I mean he was a plotter. But but I mean, dude, when you gain 20 in the air off the tee, that's a that's a difference maker. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, it's not like he's hitting foul balls either. Exactly. Yeah, he's just he's solid, and I think Zelatoris. You know, it's strange to me he hasn't won a regular PGA Tour event as well as he's played in the toughest ones. But I think, like, once he gets that first one, whatever it is, he's going to go on a bit of a tear. He's just, the ball striking is so good, and he seems to be getting very comfortable in these situations. So it's going to be interesting to watch with with his career and where it kind of goes. But he's getting pretty elite. He's competing in the, you know, he's there all the time in these big events, which, you know, you got to get comfortable with it, and it appears he is. You know, and yeah. I was going to ask you too, like if you hit a putt like that and miss, I know you still lost, but does as a professional, if you hit that putt and you lost on that one, do you still feel okay about it in the sense that you didn't give it some, you know, shit ass? Oh, dude, putt, he's got to right? have like, confidence. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you, you don't walk away from that one with your head down, right? Like you hit a good putt, it just didn't go in. Versus, you know, I would have hit it three feet short out to the right with no chance going in because I would have been shaken. He seemed to, like, step up to the moment. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, he was playing to win. You know, Fitzpatrick had a one-shot lead, and I've never had that in the U.S. Open. I don't know. I'm sure he was nervous as shit. He hit it, little hook off the tee into the bunker, hit an amazing shot, cut it around that fescue lip and landed on the green, and Zalatoris played the hole perfect and just missed the putt. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, like Fitzpatrick got a break. Zalatoris played it perfect, barely missed the putt, and that was it. That last pin, I don't think you could have got. I didn't see anybody close. Everybody was long. Did you yeah. see anybody close to that thing? Not at all. All day? They, they were all Yeah, I don't, I don't even was. know where you could have landed it. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I saw Fitzpatrick's, where, where it ended up, I was like, yeah, this is over because because Zalatoris can hit a perfect shot, and he's 20 feet. I'm not saying he couldn't have made the 20-footer. He almost did, but 
it wasn't a pin. It wasn't a pin that you could have stuck one on. No, no, they were all in that position essentially, and a little defensive going down that hill. So, you know, we got one more major to go. We'll see what uh, see what transpires from there. But um, I was going to ask you too. You, you you played on the PGA Tour uh, this summer, got into the Byron Nelson. How was it getting back out there? You know, with the best in the world and. You know, I know day one wasn't what you wanted, but day two, you sort of seemed to find your rhythm a little bit. Like, how was that experience to kind of get back there and do it again? No, it was awesome. I mean, dude, usually my game is like I'm a really good putter, and people say that, and they'll look at but I mean, that's all I could do. I would hit foul balls, and, and it could hit it pretty far, and my irons, whatever. Like, my ball striking wasn't awesome, but it wasn't horrible. I could not make a putt, and then the first day, I'm not complaining about anything. It was an amazing experience. But I, like, doubled my first hole plug, like, just hit a horrible second shot, plug one in the lip of a greenside bunker, couldn't get out, blah, blah, blah. And I was kind of playing catch-up the whole day. And then, you know, I was finishing in dark because, you know, whatever, you're the last guy, you tee up at around 2, 2.30, I don't remember. But the other guys I played with played great, and I just, like, was at the point where I was, like, three over, and then I missed a birdie and get pissed, and then, like, bogey some other kind of easy hole and ended up six over for the round. And the second day shot... The second day I shot uh, two under, and I think I missed like four putts inside six feet. <laughs> so I mean, like I was playing, I was playing fine. It's just at that point you're pretty much screwed, especially at a course where like four or five under is the cut. But man, it was it was awesome. And I knew if I would have played solid, I was there. Like some people, some you know, I'm 40 now, and I don't play that much golf. And when you're when you're uh, looking at stats and stuff, like I mean, I saw club head speed ball speed like all that stuff was like way you know probably it was good it was way way above average so that at least if you can still like you know hit it far you can still compete as long as you're as long as you know putt horrible hit horrible wire shots which is what i did but it'd be kind of demoralizing if i was getting out driven by like 50 and then you know only beating a couple guys and then just scraping it in the whole time so at least i was like you know i know that potentially if i get into another one at some point i can i can maybe make uh, some magic happen but there's a lot of hard part-time jobs. The PGA Tour is hard as shit to play on part-time, I promise. Yeah, I was going to say, does it take a little bit of rhythm to get to it? You know what I mean? Like, you're, you get you get round one in, and then you're kind of like, okay, I've done this hundreds of times. Now in round two, I kind of, like, got it again. Is there is there golf, and then there's tournament golf, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, there for sure there is. I mean, you know, you're, you're playing a PGA Tour event with... I th- they were sold out. I think the first time this tournament was sold out in forever. Great field. Can't remember exactly who they had, but I know they had like three, uh, you know, four out of the top five in the world or something like that. And you know, Speed with Speed, Scheffler, and a bunch of Texas guys there. I mean, it was it was it was awesome to see the crowds. And yeah, I mean, when you're playing golf, you're just playing golf, but it, it's different out there. It's 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 more like if I wish I would have played a couple like other tournaments pro tournaments like where you're not like in a car drinking beer the whole time just to get mentally prepared because it's slow as shit on the pga tour and it's because they're playing for a bunch of money and then you're walking i mean i was in shape it's not like i was winded but it's a different type of pace like you're not gonna practice to play on a pga tour event and go to your local course and hit a t-ball and then wait simulate three minutes (laughs) <laughs> you know, for, for simulate three minutes till it's your right. turn. You're going to get up there and hit if it's your turn. Right? So, I mean, there's that. I wish I would have played in a couple of tournaments like that, but who knows? I think, you know, maybe I'll be back. I'm lucky my North Texas section, uh, PGA section, I was lucky to win our section championship. And I think they get into the Nelson every year. And then, you know, the PGA club pro championship, you get into the PGA. So I, I, I have those two to really look forward to and hopefully, hopefully play, play in a bunch. But, um, Man, I'm enjoying enjoying kind of the other stuff I'm working on right now. Well, um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there's this new live tour that people seem to be talking about, and guys are going over there. So I didn't know if you had any thoughts on that, but I figure we could maybe tackle that next if you had any opinion. So I'll just tee a couple up, no pun intended, and you know if you have any thoughts, just let me know. So we ready to we ready to do this? Yeah, All right. sure, man. All right. I like knowing other people's thoughts. I turn, I, I just turn it all around. I'd like turn the interview around and I'll interview you and be like, what the hell happened? But let's hit it. Let's uh, hit this right. lift. Uh, there, there's a young JJ Colleen coming off the player of the year on the corn Ferry tour. He's uh, his body is in great shape. 
He hasn't ran a marathon, so his knees and ankles are shot. He's re- <laughs> he's ready to go. You know, he has not made poor food choices. He is an elite athlete. And then all of a sudden, they might throw you an offer of guaranteed money. But there's history potentially on the PJ Tour, but there's this new thing. So if you can go back in time, and they are starting to grab from the Live Tour some of these young guys, like, give me the pros and cons of a of a young player like you were coming off that great season and the sky's yeah. the limit of history or you know for lack of a better word do you take the guaranteed money because we all know you're one yeah. injury or what you know what i mean like how would your give, you could give best me, do give it, me like, an example of who like like i'm not saying i'm gonna think like them but give me an example of who you, who i would compare to and i would say like if that would be my decision because you know i think so, so we had like Taylor Gooch. Taylor Gooch, that's right? the one that came to my mind, right? That, like this kid can play. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably Abraham Answerish, uh, maybe, right? Maybe would, a little bigger. I would say Gooch has. I think Abraham Answer is a really good, solid player. I would argue Gooch has more upside of potential, of talent. Yeah. And, and you hit it a long way, kind of like he did, right? Like there's more similarities to how you played than. Abraham Answer, who's a great player, nothing against him, but yeah. you know he's got to play his game. Where like Taylor Gooch is like, you know, he's ascending, right? So I would say you're, that there's yeah. our you're Taylor Gooch. You you know, how, yeah, how, that was that was that was kind of a, and and again, I get why guys are going over now. We can talk about that later compared to the first wave, but. That was the only one that I saw, and, and we did like a Twitter space, and I think Wesley Bryan came on, and Mackenzie Hughes, and obviously, you know, they're playing on the PJ Tour. They're like that one was just kind of a head scratcher because there was, there was, there, you know, the guys going over there fit fit kind of a specific, you know, criteria, right? They're they were a little bit older, uh, you know, potentially potentially injury prone. You could argue their best golf was behind them, blah blah blah. But but what I would say was. A guy like Gooch, you know, and he he played mini tours for a while, and I think he's a little older than people think. But you know, he had already made I think close to four million bucks this year. Right. So I mean, the dude can play. The dude can play. Um, and and you know that means your auto auto in FedEx Cup, maybe maybe even close to to being close. You know, one good playoff event. And you're in Atlanta. I think if you're in Atlanta, you're in all the majors. Huge bonus stuff, right? Um. So so. I think it would just come down to what's the there there's there's a money situation in golf that you have to be an idiot not to not to think about and you know you could get you could get hurt and have this catastrophic catastrophic injury and there's probably a dollar amount that you know I don't know what it is 30 million 40 million 50 million I have no idea 100 million I have no idea what they offered him um and I really haven't seen exact numbers it's just like I've seen reports. Dustin Johnson offered 125 million. You probably saw that number yeah. for him, right? Yeah. Well, have we ever seen an official or a statement that said that he got paid 120? I don't know if we have. Like Phil Mickelson, 200 million. Like, I don't know. That sounds about right, but I really haven't seen anything. We just have to assume that that's factual or, or correct. But I, I, I feel as if some guys have to think about, man, what it, what happens if I like lose my game? And maybe maybe some guys are streaky, like they got to the PJ Tour later in their career, kind of like Gooch. Right. And they're like, man, this is a lot of money. You know, I played on the PJ Tour. I'm grateful for it. I'd like to play other PJ Tour events if I can. It's not like I never want to play there again. But you know, and I don't know if he's married. I have no idea. But but I'd be I, I'd say, man, that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of cash, and I'm set, ready to go. And you know, people start bitching about. My whole deal with it is. If you look at it from a business standpoint, pure business, it's crazy to not go over there. Crazy, right? So if you're just if you're just a business person and all you're doing every day is making deals, you're crazy not to go over there and take whatever the money so, is. So because let's say they gave up, Gooch twenty million plus DFL is one hundred and seventy grand for last place now. Yeah, right. Well, and they're and they're well and they're give. I don't know if you know, but like they're giving those some a lot of those guys that and every time they tee up, there's like a bonus of something that's for some guys but yeah so i mean the worst the worst he's you know he's making you're you're making a couple million bucks out there and he's one of the best guys arguably maybe even played the best out of anybody out there 
um, he's probably going to win a couple. I mean, you got to think you're going to make maybe ten million bucks in eight Correct. events. Right. So in in so, three years, you could you could make say they give you a twenty million dollars salary, and you can make six million a year at worst for three years. That's thirty eight million dollars. Do you know how long it would take yeah. him on the PGA Tour to make thirty eight million dollars? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the other deal is it's a lot of money. And I understand, I understand that, well, how much money do you need? But, like, there hasn't been a single business situation on the planet or a, a political view or whatever that's ended up well for the other person when they go around ask, telling people how much money they should make. Like, it just doesn't end up well. And, like, that's a lot of money, right? And so you gotta you got to just think business-wise, no matter what it is, if he's getting – if he makes that amount of money this year that he would make the rest of his career, I mean, upfront money is, is worth way more in the scheme of things. Okay. That's the business component of it all. That's the business component. If we're just talking business wise and we're business people, it's an easy deal to make. Okay. Now there's the other components. There's the political component, yes. which is what, what is upsetting golf fans. There's, I don't want any competition component, which is upsetting the PGA tour. And then there's the players where they're like feel pretty loyal to the PJ Tour because they made a pretty good living, and the PJ Tour's promised to make significant changes to help them out, especially the big time guys, right? So we're talking the top ten guys in the world. But you know that that whole PIP thing last year, the 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 player incentive program, that was meant to take care of the best guys, right? Really, really, they 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 developed that to combat. Um, they developed that to combat, you know, this new Saudi thing that was coming out. But 40% of the guys on that list that won money aren't even on the PJ Tour anymore. Dustin Johnson, gone. Right. Right? Like like Bryson, gone. Kepka, gone. Somebody else on there, I don't even know. I'd have to look at the list. But there, those guys are – and people are like, well, the guys going over there washed up. Their careers are over. Like the PJ Tour had a metric for their most valuable players, and that yes. was them. So they don't want to lose forty. They don't want to lose four out of their top ten most valuable players, right? So I mean, that that whole that whole program, I think they should just ditch in general. And what they're going to end up doing that'll hurt a lot of other guys is, you know, we're going to have these invitationals. It sounds like with with monster money, but it's just taking care of the big boys that kind of stayed around. So it's a whole. Man, it's 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 like a downward spiral, and and it's really tough to manage. Like I, the guys trying to do a damage control over there. Like the the last thing on there that they're even thinking about right now is the developmental tours. Like the Corn Ferry Tour is way down their priority list, and the other like the Canadian and the you know Latino America is way lower right. than that. They're like shit. How do we keep our best guys, you know, from going over and accepting infinity money? So it's like. I have no idea. I mean, to tell you how out of touch everything is, they the Q school went up to sixty five hundred dollars this year. Yeah, and, and to me, that's one just from knowing the guys out on the Corn Ferry tour and, and grinding through this. Like I, it, well, as you well know, it's a what one hundred fifty grand just to play the tour, probably between a professional caddy at least, right? Traveling, I mean, not. Pri- I mean, just to to make it. Yeah. Right. Well, so so I played in two thousand twelve. And I was lucky because I finished first on na- Corn Ferry or Nationwide. So I tell everybody I, I play everything except the majors. So I literally played, I think, every event except the majors. And that was like 33 events or something like that. It was a big schedule. Um, and this was 2012, and I think I paid my caddy like 1500 And now it's got to be up to two grand. I mean, it's ten. It's got to be more than that. And then I paid him five, seven, ten. So that was pretty right. much a basic deal, right? So like. Five percent for a made cut, seven percent top ten, ten percent win. Plus, I give him fifteen hundred. Now I'm going to guess it's creeping over two grand, three. You know, the big boys probably just pay their guy, write him a check for, you know, I don't know, a hundred grand a month. I have no idea. But, but you know, having done all that, you know, paid hotel every week. Um, you know, you're traveling, you're traveling around, and they take care of you. Uh, courtesy car. You know, you're pretty much only on your own for for dinner. You know, a few meals here or there, but really, really, you're in the four grandish, three to four grandish range, a mo- uh, a oh, tournament, right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I played 33, so that was that was in 2012. So I mean, now with inflation, that's probably six million dollars. No, but but now it's probably like we're looking at, 
I don't know, at least 100. What you said is pretty much spot on, I think, man. And I think there's going to have to be something, especially within the Corn Ferry Tour, you know, there there is, you know, courtesy cars are rare. The guys grinding out there. I always thought, like, it just seems strange that you do the Pro-Am. They have, you know, you're entertaining. You're still out there playing two rounds of golf. And as a professional athlete, you then net lose five grand for the week. Like, I don't know. There's no other sport that has yeah. it that way. And people say, oh, it's the competition stuff. But it's still, at the end of the day... You guys are in, it's in the entertainment business and yeah. you're, you're entertaining people even for the two rounds that you don't, you know, make the cut and you got to do the pro-am and all that stuff. It just seems like it's, it's a strange thing to ask the guys to lose money when you're making money off of them being out there from TV yeah, I mean, contracts, in, in, all of it. And it's hard to compare it to any other sport. You know, the PGA tour, it's worth it for them to make sure that those tours are successful but they're not meant to have anybody on there for a while because the PGA Tour, if you, if the PGA Tour wants you on the PGA Tour from a business component standpoint, <laughs> they don't give a shit about guys that are on the Corn Ferry Tour for six years. Those aren't the stars of the PGA Tour, right? right. Like the, that's a stepping stone. Maybe there's guys maybe for three years that come out and they're 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 guns a blazing. But like if you're on if you're on Canadian or Latin America, like if you're you know out there and you let's say you keep your card out there or whatever i don't know what their money list is but if you're out there for three years and then corn ferry for another four like they're just that's that's not their jam they want a guy that flies through corn ferry maybe a sponsor exemption guy i mean that's what puts butts in the seats and that's what that's what sells money so it's worth it for them to make sure those tours are successful just so they can grab a few of those guys out of there every single year but really those tours lose their ass i mean if from a bottom line standpoint so so you, you know, think they it's, almost it's, again, need to make them uncomfortable so you can't sit out there for 10 years? Is that sort of the idea? Like you either. That's, I mean, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what it has been for a long time. And purses keep going up and all these other things. And I think that's great. Like the corn fairy tour is hard as shit to get onto. And if you keep your card, you play pretty damn well out there. But the PJ tour doesn't want a guy that keeps his corn fairy tour card. And if you're a business owner, you wouldn't really want him either. You'd want a guy gets up to the PGA tour and he's your top guy. He plays in those big WGCs. He does all these other things. So, I mean, that's, that's where it's well worth it. But, but I mean, I haven't seen the, the financials for their developmental circuit tours that they own, but it's gotta be extremely low. I'm sure the one that was in China, that's not around or whatever that China was floating the, you know, some cash to keep that thing going. But right. man, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's hard to compare it to major league baseball with rookie ball all the way to triple a, but you know those those organizations aren't. I mean, they're they're not making money. Like all those guys are on some sort of salary or low salary, or they're using it as a stepping stone for guys for rehab starts. But it's all about the big show, right? It's all about the big the big deal. The NFL has college football. Like they right. they totally lucked out. That's their stepping stone is is college football. So, I mean, it's 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 one of those deals where it's the cross they bear. And, and I, I I'm glad Corn Ferry Tour purses have gone up, but it's like at the end of the day. Who, who cares because from a business standpoint, because it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Those guys aren't going to move the needle on the PGA tour until they're on the PGA tour. So from just hearing you, it would be a, let's say you came off that great season on the corn Ferry tour, which is nationwide. Then like it would be a, and then let's say they wanted to grab young talent, live tours expand. Like it would have been a very hard decision for you to say, do you go, I mean, who doesn't want to be a PGA tour winner in the history versus, do I jump ship? You could almost argue both sides of the coin is what you're sort of saying to me. Well, if I'm a rookie, if I'm a rookie, so I, I was, so when I got my, I was on corn Ferry tour for four years and I kept my card every time and like just missed it finals at Q school. And then I won the finish first that one year and got in everything. If I was, didn't even have the opportunity to play on the PGA tour, like I probably, that's all I've been thinking about and trained to do my entire life. Right. So that's what I would do. Like it wouldn't even, I mean, at some point, the money would be like, oh, my God, that's a lot. But I never played on the PGA Tour, so I never experienced. If I was on the PGA Tour for, I mean, it's Taylor Gooch. I don't know how many years he's played, but for Three, this four. was my third yeah. year. If this was my third year and I felt like I had played pretty good and I know how much I could make, you know, if I played my ass off, played average, had a shit year, and I was offered X amount of money, could be gone, right? I mean, definitely that I can see that how that can happen. Yeah. If I'm... 43 years old and I'm offered 
yeah. over 150 percent what I've made my entire career, and I've, you know, and it's in the the smaller tournaments, the whatever, the shotgun, the travel. That's a hell of a lot easier decision. So like, it gets easier and easier and easier the more established you are. I think. Yeah, for Ian Poulter at 46 years old or whatever he is, take you got to go. You got to yeah. go. Yeah, and I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a, like, I'm not against any of the guys going over there. Like some people are losing their goddamn mind, but I don't care. Like those guys still want to play PGA tour events. And I think they should let them play it as long as they meet the criteria that's already always had to be met to play it. And I just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Like if you want to play golf somewhere, do it. If you want to be a member of the PGA tour and still try to get in your 12 to 15 events or whatever in, in, in play both, that's, that's completely fine. But what you're going to start seeing now is the the you know we saw kind of a they took forever to release the field list and then we saw it and we were like shit that's kind of weird and then we saw guys actually there warming up hitting balls we're like wow this is going down and now we're seeing guys every not everybody but you know I was reading something and, and it's gone pretty everything's gone pretty pretty close to factual but. Like, you know, after Portland, there's going to be something like 36 out of the top 150 in the world. Well, all of a sudden, that's pretty good. That's a pretty strong field mm-hmm. for only 48 guys, mm-hmm. right? And the other thing that the tour, and, and I know they're concerned about it, but they haven't mentioned much, is the young guys. I mean, I can't remember. USAM Champ or somebody has paid $6 million bucks yes, plus 250000 an event plus what they make. So, I mean, you're making $10 million at worst. And Before this, you even yes, see it. And, and this was my young JJ Colleen coming off a great season. Oh, they start, so oh, so really young. See, I was thirty then, so I just knew I wasn't. No, that but young. I'm You're just talking like, but, like yeah. But, but let's say you. they're trying to draft talent, and you went out on arguably the second best tour in the world and finished number one. Right, yeah. you did. You did that. So then, you know, then does the live tour start going? That guy can play. Right. Let's let's yeah. offer him twenty million dollars. Between three years of playing out here, a $10 million signing bonus, for you to take that step based on what you did on that, that tour, and obviously you had talent. So are they going to start drafting the next Jordan Spieth or the next, you know, Corn Ferry Tour dominant player like they did with that USAM kid to go do it? And then is that a real threat to the PGA Tour? And what would you have done yeah. in that situation that you're now wanted because of what you accomplished? Yeah, twenty million bucks. I'm probably done. I mean, who knows? <laughs> right, but I mean, that's so much money. You know, because I wouldn't have the Corn Ferry Tour. And again, like I, I hate. I don't want to talk about money. Like I'm not saying it's not a lot or whatever. But I finished first on the Corn Ferry Tour in 2012, and I can't remember. But I won twice and had like seven top fives or something. That was probably four hundred and change back then, right? If someone offered, if someone offered me twenty million dollars. Right. So we're talking over 50 times what I did where I felt like I had the best golf that I've ever played. That's, that's tough to, that's tough to turn down right there. And you know, there's probably other incentives that I don't even know about, but that's a huge, I mean, you're, you're, you're set for, I mean, you're good. You're good to go for life. Right. Right. And guess what? You actually get to still play golf. It's not like they're making me quit golf. (laughs) Exactly. And that's, that's where I was wondering, like, what would, you know, the history of being on the PGA Tour, potentially winning on the PGA Tour versus the business decision for some of these young guys is going to be very interesting, right? Of at what point do you just, I, I, I got a family, you know, like, okay, it's a $10 million signing bonus and I pretty much can calculate even if I finish last in all of these events, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Do they start pulling young talent, not the established guys, but do they start going through the college ranks and offering these? Oh, guys? they are for sure. No, no, no they they will. I mean, in, in, and I'm not even saying it negatively, but like any business, you're going to get the most young, promising. I mean, yeah. if you owned a if you owned a dairy farm, like you're going to get the most promising young farmer to <laughs> take over one of your dairies one day. I mean, whatever the hell it is, like that's you're going to go after the youngest guy, and you're going to pay him money where you know that it's you know that it's worth it. You know, it's a good product. I mean. So three years ago, could you imagine if if Morikawa, Wolf, and Hovland got paid fifteen million dollars each to go over there and, and well, play shit, for that? Kind we might of have money. never seen him again. Exactly, and, and didn't even have tour. Here's the other part. Here, okay, here's the kicker. Like the 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 scenario that you described to me, I actually had would add full PJ Tour status, which is worth something. If I had 
if I had some sponsor starts or maybe had to go to Corn Ferry Finals, but I didn't have any like a guaranteed PGA Tour where I can pick and choose my events, that that's a, I mean that that's hard as shit to do, to to you know get that kind of status. And now all of a sudden I could potentially have nothing in a year and not be even on the tour. It's a lot easier for me to take the money, right? Exactly. Right. I mean, even if you're a stud, what do you get? Eight or six? What, how many PGA Tour sponsors? I think they get. Yeah, I don't remember. It used to always be seven, but maybe it's different. I know if you, I know if you Monday qualify, it doesn't count. I know right. if you top ten, it doesn't count. But like, you can get like up to like seven unrestricted starts or something like that. And no the guess. best of the best have kind of gotten through on those. But that's not a guarantee. Oh hell no! Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is going to get so interesting to see what if this thing makes it two or three years out of what happens. To that next generation of Matthew Wolf, Morikawa, they're just you know studs. Justin Thomas's. Do they do they get? Is there a different pathway where, like I said, you never see him on the PGA Tour? And that's got to be scary to the PGA Tour. Well, the scariest thing really would be if they end up buying the European Tour or or having some sort of alliance and. You know, the live golf events are essentially FedEx Cup events. I mean, they're essentially WGCs. Like, I know that there's shotgun and it's 54 holes, but the WGC is a small field, no cut tournament, right? So, I mean, the PGA Tour would have a handful of those. The live golf would have, you know, they said 15 next year, but call it whatever it is. And then they would have the European Tour and the PGA Tour, their remainders would be the PGA Tour. Now, all of a sudden, the tours are close to equal. You know what I mean? That's like the that's the worst scenario ever for them. There's world ranking points. There's all this stuff. The European Tour can't afford to suspend guys. It's just it's not. It, I don't want to never say never, but I know they said they have an alliance with the tour, but they they cannot. First of all, they can't get rid of their you know the Poulter, Sergio, um, Louis, Ustazen, Keimer. You know, just yeah. guys that are recognizable, right? right? And Westwood, and also, they really can't afford to not allow the Americans applying for status to not, to not. I mean, how much better all of a sudden is your tour if Mickelson, Kepka, Reed, Taylor, Answer? I mean, how much better did Kevin the, did the, playing did in the, the freaking in, yeah. yeah yeah yeah? How much how much better did the Dutch Open just get? Correct, Kevin Nah. I mean, a lot better, right? So that's all of a sudden that's that's a massive deal and that's world ranking point stuff. So we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Um, I, it's easy to look in, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, but like you can't just start banning people immediately from something. That's just like, that was just a horrible strategy. That's going to, that's going to, that, the majors has no incentive in not letting these guys play at all. The majors is, you know, has no competition. They want the best field ever, right? It's one turn. They each, they each operate on their own Royal and ancient USGA PGA of America, Augusta national, like they're all independent of each other. They want the best possible field they can have. Why the hell would they not want someone to play right? That's qualified or played for their tournament. So, you know, you, you always have the, the, the majors right there that these guys can play in and there's a way for them all to coexist. But right now everybody's trying to, do kind of whatever the best thing for them is the live golf i think is really it's a fluid situation because it's so new it's only the second it's only the second event but the pga tour what it's going to look like i don't know but what i see potentially happening from a business standpoint is at some point the live tour is going to fill up right and the field's already different this week i don't know if you like follow it on social media but like i'm always looking at it because i want to know like oh you know there's a couple guys that, that played the first event and you're like who the hell are you know who are these dudes or i haven't even heard of them and now it's like you start recognizing more and more and more at some point those events are going to fill up well when they do that especially the guaranteed money part you're going to see some more names go over there because there's only you know these they want these guys to play multiple years they're not going to pay dustin johnson 125 million to play eight events in one year that's Correct. not going to happen right and and at some point, if you're a big guy, and I don't, I don't even, I hate like the like Morikawa squash the rumor mill, but I'm not even going to use an example. But imagine a huge PGA Tour guy that they offer an insane amount of money to. Well, at some point, there's no more spots left. So no matter how big you are, there's nowhere to play. And I think that's why you're going to see end up seeing more guys go over there. 
but then you, you made my job easy here because I had this in my notes. Then is there an alignment with the DP World Tour? And then all of a sudden you've got, for lack of a better word, the really elite stuff with Liv. And then you bounce back and forth between DP World Tour, points are given, there's an alignment. Eventually there's a price tag where the DP World Tour says, sure. And now all of a sudden you have real competition, real competition yeah. of the PGA Tour. Right, and I could see that coexisting with each other, and there's, you know, that's how they solve the problem for getting world ranking points. It's not well. There's, yeah, there's, there's three. I mean, there's really three golf. There's, there's a little more, but the golf side fan of this is one. People are upset politically, so they're just going to do whatever they want, like they're pro or what. It's just there's politics is taking over them. The other is just like they, they like one product more than the other, and they're going to boycott. And then you have. The people that I've talked to the most that just love golf and they they throw all that other bullshit out the window and now they just want to like if live golf is on if it's on YouTube if it's on whatever and they see Phil Mickelson they like Phil Mickelson they like Dustin Johnson they like Louis Eustace who doesn't like to watch him swing if it's on TV guess what they're going to turn it on and watch it if the PGA Tour is on TV they're going to turn it on and watch it if the Corn Ferry Tour is they're going to watch it so it's like then you have just the golf fan well the golf fan really doesn't care about any of this. It's more golf for them. You know what I mean? Right, it's like right, they, get right. to, they get to watch golf. And that's that's kind of what that's what, you know, we've been doing we've had these Twitter spaces a couple of times. It's kinda of cool because we let we call them like rads, regular ass dudes that talk. Some people just go crazy and I cut them off. But some guys are like, hey man, I just I'm watching golf. Like I don't really I don't really care. I mean if if Phil has a hundred million two hundred million more dollars, is he trying to hit a shittier shot here? They're like, you know, I don't think so. He's still playing for four million bucks for this tournament or right. whatever i'm gonna watch it this is this is unique and and wow look at all these golf shots i get to watch it's it's a little weird right now i don't quite know what's happening because it's new but whatever oh and then the canadian open was on what a finish i liked i enjoyed watching both of those that was great that's what a majority of the the categories are, are kind of falling in so i i really i really think we're going to see just different different tour different formats here here for a while um, and I think the PJ Tour will be around for a long, long time. And I think the Live, obviously, they have the financial ability to be around for a long, long time. So if you don't want to watch one for one reason or another, don't watch it. Who cares? But if you like golf, watch them both. Do you think in the long run, Phil looks like a hero to the players for at least bringing this all up of saying, oh, for like, because all of a sudden now the PJ Tour has changed of what they're going to do for the best players. Did he kind of fall on the sword a little bit for the oh, benefit yeah. of the players? And in, in time, do you think he'll be vindicated a little bit more versus how he is right now? As kind of the you know, it didn't help. It didn't help the cause. He's in a black leather coat and looks like a Bond villain at the, 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 oh, the yeah, at the yeah. live he, tour, right? Like he's playing the role well, <laughs> but like eventually, does he does he turn into? He was kind of right, you know, on some oh, yeah. of this stuff. It, yeah, some of the, I mean, listen, people, there's conspiracy theories with everything and someone can be completely wrong, but usually when someone's, when someone's involved in something for decades, they usually have some sort of insight, right? Maybe their, maybe their opinion's wrong, but fact-based stuff, they have a little bit of knowledge. And, and, re, and really, I, I'm glad, and I don't want to plug For the People, but, but for, on For the People, you know, our pod with, my pod with John Peterson, we had Ship, Ship Nook is like, hey man, book was coming out he goes what you guys got going down i'm like dude you want to come on he goes yeah so you know alan wrote the book right with phil it's literally called phil and that's what kind of started this whole deal and he's he was straightforward and, and i don't know if you've read it or read excerpts or anything most people have read kind of the negative comments which is the last part of the book uh you know the saudi arabia stuff but really phil looks like he, he's kind of an enigma in it but he's like a badass in the book like it's it's awesome man like he's you know he's talking to, he's at the sports book in Vegas and he's there with his boys and he's giving all his buddies the pick and they're like Phil you go first and he's like no man I'll, I'm going to move the line if I go first you know what i mean like <laughs> like like i i got these picks and these picks are nails but but we're buddies so you go first so i don't move the line and sway it the wrong the wrong direction but you know he's it's just funny it's just funny stories like they talk about the the walker cup just the crazy shots he would pull off i mean it was it's awesome like people people loved love watching him watching him play and and i'm glad that i'm glad that we had him on you know and alan he's known for just throwing the block button at people like left and right but 
really, it was, it was kind of, he, he said it, he goes, I wrote the book. He goes, I turned it in and you know, the editor read it or whoever, whatever. I'm sure there's multiple people that go through a book. I don't know. I can barely read. I'm sure shit, not going to write one, but I'm sure there's multiple, multiple people that look through a book before the thing is published and nobody even, they're like, Oh yeah. You know, they just read it. No one like, no one's like got freaking goosebumps after reading the last part or thought there was going to be this crazy ass deal. And he didn't either. And that didn't really happen until they, till they published the thing. But you know, he's like, he, he, he ended up falling on the sword for, for so many people. Um, I mean, it's like people are acting like he, you know, he committed freaking a felony and should be in prison or something like that. And then the, the, the social media world doesn't even know what they're mad about. Like they think that, that, you know, he's losing all these sponsors because he's going to go play the live tour. No, it's, it's for the comments he made that are actually anti anti, you know, who, who was running the, the situation. So it, it was wild, man. And I'm glad that I'm glad that we kind of talked about the you know, the mindset or whatever, however, however he was able to write it. But, you know, I'm from San Diego. So like, I love Phil growing up. That's where he's from. And he was an icon. Like he was, just you know got that smooth like long swing would hit these crazy ass shots flop shots all over the place and i mean it was i I, i've always loved watching the guy him and tiger right it's like how can from a golf standpoint how can you not like 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 watching them and i think i think phil ended up i think phil ended up kind of falling on the sword after those comments or whatever and you know, maybe there's both sides at play. Maybe there's the PJ tour, maybe the live tour. He was trying to negotiate something, but he was right about a lot of it. And the, you know, and say whatever you want. People are like, Oh, it's the TV contract. No bullshit. The, P- the PJ tour is not changing anything right now with purses. If the live tour doesn't exist, like that's what really, at. yes. Like the, the, yeah, this they have whole, Greg Norman, they have Greg Norman and Phil to think. And I know that sounds, people are like, their anti live tour will like cringe when I say that, but it's like, if we use our brains, why, why are the purses going up? They're going up because of this other tour. Why are, why are all these like specialty no cut events on the PJ tour happening? They're happening because of Phil and Norman, you know, kind of spearheading this other deal. So they're the, everybody in professional golf at the highest levels reaping the benefits right now. Exactly. Did the, let's say somebody stays in the PJ tour who is now 82nd on the money list. When they see Phil two years from now, do they go give him the biggest hug ever and say, thank you. Because now I've just made three point eight million dollars versus one point six. Yeah, I mean right? for sure. I, yeah, if they know him. I mean, a... I hug I hug random people. Like even if they don't know him, maybe they could hug him. But if they do, for sure they would hug him. Maybe kiss him. I have no idea. Yeah. But yes, that's why it happens. People are like, oh, it's greed. It's all this other. I mean, call 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 it whatever you want to call it. But that's that's why the purses are going up on the PGA Tour. It's because of the Live Tour. Well, who is responsible for the Live Tours? Who's spearheading the Live Tour? I mean, let's use our brains here and figure that out, and boom, there it is. 